Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we'll be going through a practice question related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system, the pulmonary system specifically. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder that we'll be starting up our crash courses for the October series coming up here very shortly. We run those three weeks before every test day. So as you are preparing for the October NPTE, be sure to check out our crash courses. This will also be equally applicable in every test date. So if you need a way to study those last few weeks, especially over the big three systems, that's our primary target target in the crash courses to go over the cardio, muscular, and neuro system. As recall, this involves almost 75% of the test related to the cardiovascular, neuromuscular, and musculoskeletal systems. We try to take you through a bunch of practice questions, give you some of the key content, ways to go through it very quickly so that you can dominate in those systems on test day. So again, it is meant to be a very quick review. It's a way to go through a lot of content very, very quickly. Great way to, we'll say cramming, but it's, it's way better than cramming because we teach you not only the content you need, but also how to apply it to test questions. You'll not want to miss that. Plus, remember, if you can get a cohort together, a group of five or more, you can get a pretty sweet discount. So just email us over at ptfinalexam.com slash contact. You can get a hold of us for a group discount if you want to get your cohort together. We have some pretty sweet offers for those of you who can get your cohort together and get you on the way. So Let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. So today again is about the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. Specifically, we'll be doing this question related to the pulmonary system. Again, those of you who enjoy seeing and reading the question, please join us over on YouTube. You'll be able to find us in video format there. Those of you who are driving, you're running, I just talked to a bunch of you who who use this podcast on your commute to your clinicals and to your, in fact, I was talking to someone who's, they're on temporary licenses between graduation day and test day. So again, hope you can use this in good health. We'll, as per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. A patient with a recent upper respiratory infection three days ago is being evaluated a, by a physical therapist. The patient reports that the symptoms of the infection have been aggravated, and the patient now presents with pleuritic chest pain, productive cough, and a fever. Which of the following groups of signs is also most likely present? So again, we have a patient with a recent upper respiratory infection three days ago being evaluated. The patient reports the symptoms of the infection have been aggravated, and the patient now presents with pleuritic chest pain, productive cough, and a fever. Which of the following groups of signs is also most likely present? So we have number one, cachexia, nail clubbing, bradypnea. Number two, crackles, tachypnea, hypercapnia. Number three, hemoptysis, rust-colored sputum, fibrosis. And number four, wheezes, bradypnea, and hyperoxia. So wheezes, bradypnea, hyperoxia. So again, those options, cachexia, nail clubbing, bradypnea, crackles, tachypnea, hypercapnia, hemoptysis, rust-colored sputum, fibrosis, and wheezes, bradypnea, hyperoxia. So this question is dealing with someone who has had a recent re- upper respiratory infection. A lot of times this is this is the classic history for someone who's developing pneumonia to have the symptoms be aggravated, become aggravated, and then present with some more severe symptoms. So the correct answer here is that option number two, crackles, tachypnea, and hypercapnia. So this is a mix and match style question where you have to identify the correct options among several incorrect options. And the key with identifying incorrect options is if it's partially incorrect, then it's totally incorrect. So again, a patient with the upper respiratory infection, that's a pretty clear sign that there's something going on that has worsened or aggravated. And now they have pleuritic chest pain, productive cough, and a fever. So those three signs are pretty clearly associated with pneumonia, especially bacterial pneumonia, when you consider some of these other signs that come up in the answer options. So looking at these answer options, The first one, cachexia, nail clubbing, bradypnea, this is incorrect. Cachexia is related to restrictive lung diseases because it becomes more difficult to breathe over time. Therefore, they start to lose muscle mass. It becomes a caloric intake problem. But where this has only been going on three days, it is quite unlikely that you'll be noticing cachexia. You'll also be unlikely to notice the nail clubbing or the fibrosis that occurs at the nail beds where 
again, related to chronic hypoxemia or too little oxygen. And then bradypnea also is opposite. You would not have bradypnea. You typically have tachypnea. So the nail clubbing and cachexia are simply, it's way too early to have those, even though I guess technically a long-term result of, well, the cachexia is likely to be res resultant. Well, I guess both of them could be resultant from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But in this case, it just, there's not enough time. It simply wouldn't have happened. Other in incorrect answers, hemoptysis or a bloody cough. Uh, that would be more likely in the case of some type of, of tumor or like a pulmonary embolism, something where you have acute trauma to the lung. Uh, Rust-colored sputum, that is possible in the case of, of bacterial pneumonia, especially. So rust-colored sputum would be correct, but it's unlikely that you develop fibrosis at this time. So fibrosis, again, would be more of a long-term long -term result of severe pneumonia. And again, we're just not to that point yet. And finally, the last incorrect answer. So wheezes or wheezing, that's less likely. Wheezing is when you have bronchoconstriction. It's much more likely you'd have crackles. So wheezing is not exactly right. Uh, bradypnea, again, that's opposite. And then hyperoxia, you would not have hyperoxia, so that's too much oxygen. Rather, you'd have hypoxia or hypooxia, too little oxygen. Leaving us with our only correct answer, which would be the crackles, tachypnea, and hypercapnia. So crackles, that's like the bubble wrap. You have fluid in the alveoli, tachypnea. They have to breathe faster and harder in order to get oxygen exchange because their alveoli are filling up with fluid. And then finally, hypercapnia, or too much carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. So too much carbon dioxide or aggregation of carbon dioxide, this would be because they're having difficulty with that oxygen exchange. So to list the entirety, or at least a, a somewhat complete list of the sim signs and symptoms related to pneumonia, they would include productive cough, which is often rust colored in the case of bacterial pneumonia, more of a clear color or uh, a um, serum based color in the case of viral pneumonia. In either case, a productive cough with, with some type of, of uh, expectorant, uh, tachypnea, so increased breathing, crackles, fever, fatigue, myalgia or muscle pain, loss of appetite, hypoxia, too little oxygen, hypercapnia, too much carbon dioxide. So honestly, this, this question feels a lot like a word salad where you're trying to distinguish between all of the terms. And that can be slightly overwhelming, especially when you're in a hurry on test day. But as you're taking questions like this, I would highly encourage you just to, you know, number one, you, you know the you know the definitions to these questions, or at least you can get very close to it just with the context clues. And then the, the other thing or the, the key, real key point with a question like this is making sure that you have identified the partially incorrect answers so that you can rule them out totally. So again, if there's a partially incorrect answer, it makes it totally incorrect. And so you have to match, match up your answer with all of the data contained in the question and make sure that the answer is indeed completely correct and not just partially correct. So there you go. There is a, a list-based, I should say, list-based question related to the pulmonary system. Uh, be sure to check out all the other episodes we have here on the NPTE podcast. If you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star review. Helps a ton as we're trying to get the word out. And as you check out all those other episodes, I hope you have a happy, happy studying day. Take good care of yourself. Will Crane fist pumps all around. And I'll catch you all in the next session. Thanks.